What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. You guys can call me T and today I got a really exciting video where I wanted to test a couple things. And obviously, as you can tell by the title and uh, this bike right here, that uh, we got some experimenting to do. Now I've wanted to try this experiment for a long time now. And now that I finally had a chance to, I'm really excited to give you my findings. So what I really wanted to know is how much faster is the E-Clutch versus a standard manual, uh, normal version of the bike. This bike technically not in America, but in the European States, you can get it without a quick shifter. But I wanted to find out how much faster the bike is if you choose to use the E-Clutch over the normal version. So today, we're gonna find out just how much faster it is. Now, before we dive into the actual experiment, I kinda wanna let you know how this E-Clutch works over like a quick shifter. Now, a quick shifter will interrupt the engine power momentarily whereas the E-clutch will actually engage the clutch, where it just kind of, it'll just briefly split the clutch and allow it to shift more seamlessly. Just, it's gonna give you that fraction faster than what a quick shifter would do. Now, because this is just engaging the clutch, you are allowed to have full power on this thing while you're shifting. And a quick shifter is gonna disengage the power just slightly. So I'm talking like milliseconds difference between a quick shifter and e-clutch but it's barely going to be noticeable and i mean the only way you would probably see a difference is if you had identical bikes and you were racing on a drag strip and that's like very small so realistically e-clutch versus quick shifter they're basically the same thing the only advantage this thing has is that you can downshift where a quick shifter you have to actually pull in the clutch to downshift you can't upshift on a quick shifter that's the only thing that makes this a little bit better than a quick shifter but now you know kind of the difference between what they are, we can dive into the criteria that it takes to experiment on what this actually can do. Now, since everything is not created equally, especially bikes, I wanted to find a baseline of what it would take in order to get 60 miles per hour, not just on a sport bike. I decided to break out my 2018 Honda Shadow Phantom, and I wanted to see what it takes to get zero to 60 on a cruiser versus a sport bike. Because obviously a motorcycle is gonna be slightly faster than like a car, and a sport bike is gonna be faster than a cruiser. So I broke out my shadow and I was able to get access to a private road for a little bit during the day. And that's why this makes it so much better because I was able to actually get access to that. So YouTube, don't come for me. But because I was able to do that, I broke out the shadow and I wanted to find a zero to 60 and a zero to 100 time on the bike. Now, in order to make this as fair as possible, I had a complete stop, engine idle, no revving, just zero to as fast as you can go in that time frame. So here is what it takes in order to get the shadow to zero to 60 and zero to 100. Now, if you notice by that video, it took me 7.43 seconds just to hit 60 miles per hour, which is not slow, but it's not fast either. It's kind of in between. It's like a car. It's not very good. And it took me over 17 seconds to just hit 85 miles per hour. I couldn't even hit 100. Actually, I'm pretty sure that bike can't even hit 100. I think the fastest I've ever gotten it was 96. I think I could get it faster, but I'd have to take a chip out somewhere. It's governed, I'm pretty sure. So you might even be able to get a little bit more. That bike does technically have a power commander and an exhaust on it. So it has a little bit more than just the stock version, but now you can kind of figure out the baseline of where we're going. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the CBR. And the only thing the CBR has is an upgraded exhaust. It has the acropovic exhaust, everything else is completely stock. So let's go ahead and find out what we can do with this bike. Now, before we get into this next part, there's one more little thing that we have to test. And that is how long it takes to shift manually versus shift with the E-Clutch. The E-Clutch, I couldn't actually get a time on it because it is so minuscule of a time. And I can't really, like, unless I have a camera right on my foot, uh, that's pretty much the only way I could tell. It's gotta be like super fraction. But I was able to record how long it takes to shift with manual shifting. 
So let's show you exactly how long it takes to do that. Now, if you notice in that video, the way I was able to determine the time is the second I rolled off the throttle until the second I was hammering it again. So in that time, it took me 0.27 seconds. According to Google, it takes roughly half a second to one second for the average person. I would consider myself maybe a little bit above average, but most people, let's just base it off of what I'm doing right now. Now for basing it off of that information alone, four shifts already put you one second slower than the e-clutch version. Just because I don't really know exactly how fast that shift is, it's gotta be maybe like 0 0.05, I don't know. It's something super small. So just keep that in mind. So now what we're gonna go do is we're gonna go ahead and find out how fast it takes to go zero to a 60 and zero to 100 on the e-clutch version. Now, if you noticed in that clip, it took me 4.4 seconds in order to hit 60 miles per hour. This part is kind of iffy to give you an exact number only because technically you can hit 60 mile an hour in first gear alone. So what I tried to do is to shift every time I hit right at redline, which is just after 12,000 RPMs. I'm trying to do my best to keep it as evenly as possible. So right at redline, I shift. And you'll notice what happens in the difference between normal and the clutch version. But continuing on with the e-clutch version, it took me 7.96 seconds to hit 100. Now, because this has an electronic dash, it is hard to get an accurate reading of when you actually hit 60 and 100, because as you saw in that first clip, 57 to 66 was literally a frame after. So that time there is gonna be, again, within fractions of a second. And I can't get an accurate one only because the dash doesn't read every mile per hour at that acceleration. So we're gonna have to work with that. Everything's still gonna be very close to each other, especially on the first times. So now that you know it's these times, 4.4 seconds to 60 miles per hour and 7.96 to 100 miles per hour with the E-clutch, which is pretty fast. And I don't know if you could tell within that clip, but that front wheel wants to come off the ground once you hit about 5,000 RPMs and it really starts to open up, it's hard to keep that front wheel on the ground. So keep that in mind for my new riders. If you want to get a bike like this, just remember when you open it up, it will want to kick. So now we're going to move on to the clutched version of the bike and let's find out what kind of times we can get for our zero to 60 and zero to 100. Let's go. <laughs> Now, if you noticed in that clip, like I had mentioned before, that I like to shift right about redline, which is a little after 12,000. And because the speedometer is not accurate when you're accelerating that fast, times will be a little off. But the original time on the clutch version was 4.66 seconds. And that is right as I see it over 60 miles per hour, whether it be 60, 65, 66, whichever. Whenever it reads anything over 60, is when I can get that number and give you a time. So compared to the e-clutch version, which was 4.4 seconds, and the clutch version is 4.6, you're basically in the same rate because it's in that first gear. It's like very small. So at least we can agree that it is basically the same. Now where the real time changes is that final number at the 100 miles per hour. And if you noticed, it was 9.47 seconds. Now technically, I think I shifted a little bit early. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and knock off one shift time, which was the 0.27 seconds, and that'll bring it down to a 9.2 seconds for a zero to 100, which is over a second slower versus the E-clutch version. Not the clutch, but the E-clutch. So like we had mentioned before, it's gonna be about a second per four shifts. And it was actually about three shifts and you're still about a second slower. Now, obviously, you might be able to get that a little bit faster 
if you can shift a little bit quicker, but I wanna say the average person is somewhere between 0.25 and 0.5 seconds for a quick shift for like a normal rider. So now that we have kind of the full information that we have now, before I go to the final breakdown again, just to kind of recap everything, I wanna kind of briefly mention the Google Sheets of when you Google what the zero to 60 time is on this bike, it says 3.5 seconds. I'd say it's about a second slower, around 4.5, because that is what we got. You may get closer to four seconds, but that probably zero to 20 miles per hour is really slow off the start. Obviously, if you had like a rev, if you were in clutched version, it might be a little bit faster, because if you have the RPMs high, then obviously you'll have more punch right off the bat. But I'd like to say that the zero to 60 time is more like four seconds, not 3.5. So for the people out there that are really determined about time frames, base it off of the video I had, both clutched and e-clutch version are closer to 4.5 seconds and 3.5. So do with that information as you wish. So now that we have everything finally done, let's go ahead and recap all the information that we got. When you base it off of the Honda Shadow, a zero to 60 on a cruiser bike, was 7.43 seconds. Now, if you compare that to the e-clutch versions, or not the e-clutch, but a sport bike version, the time it takes to hit 100 is about the same time it takes to hit 60 on a cruiser. So that distance is great. And obviously the cruiser couldn't reach 100 miles per hour. It was about 17 seconds just to reach 85. So you know it's gonna take even longer to hit 100. Now moving on, the e-clutch version was able to hit 60 miles per hour at 4.4 seconds. And then the clutch version was able to hit 60 miles per hour at 4.66 seconds. So those are very even numbers right there. Now, obviously the big difference here was the 60 to 100 times. In that time, the e-clutch version took 7.96 seconds in order to reach 100 miles per hour. And the clutch version, we're gonna give it that handicap because I did kind of miss shift took 9.2 seconds. So obviously now with the math that we have and video proof, the E-Clutch is about a second faster if you wanna reach 100, which if we're talking numbers here, one second is quite a big difference if you were racing head to head. On a drag strip, that one second is big. But I'm glad I was finally able to get this information out there and I'm hoping you guys liked it. Now, before I end this video, I actually wanted to mention a major problem that I've been having with this bike. And that is where it engages second and then falls into neutral. And I'm not talking about a false neutral where it just doesn't hit second. I had the shifting in the medium hardness where you can go into the settings, you can do soft, medium, hard. I had it on medium and four times when I tested this, the bike would go, I'd shift into second, it would grab second. As soon as I let off the gas, it would fall back into neutral. And then when I would try to pull in the clutch to shift it up into second, the clutch did not activate. So obviously it was still an e-clutch version, even though pulling in the clutch, there was still a problem there. I don't know what is causing that. However, I have shifted the settings to the soft setting and we're gonna find out if we have any more problems since changing that. I haven't, but I did wanna mention that there was a problem with that. And I'm gonna show you a clip after this, but Basically, like I had mentioned, I hit second gear and it didn't activate. The dash just went blank. So I'll slow the video down so you can see exactly what happens. But as I shift to second, the dash indicator goes from you know first gear to nothing, and it's still grabbing second gear because I'm still getting power. But as soon as I let off the gas when it was in the red line, it dropped back into neutral. And then when I tried to pull the clutch in in order to shift up, it wouldn't do it. It was still in e-clutch mode. It's not like, it's like as I pulled in the clutch, it's supposed to take over and be in manual mode, but it didn't do that. So that is obviously a problem. Uh, I don't know why that happened. I'm wondering if maybe the shift lever was too loose because that should take over if you pull the clutch in. It didn't, 
when I tried to shift up into second, it bounced off second and back into neutral, and it was hard. So keep that in mind when you have a bike like this. It may be a problem, I don't know, it might just be mine, but changing it to soft might help. So just wanted to give that a PSA for everybody who is riding this bike. And with that, this video comes to an end, and I thank you guys for making it this far along. I really enjoyed making this video. I appreciate all of my followers that I have. As you can tell, I am a small YouTube channel, but I really appreciate the people that are liking my content. So thank you guys so much. I will catch you guys in the next one. Enjoy your day. Stay safe.